Those two in that picture, they were two of my good friends from school. He's one of my good friends from Atlanta, too. What does good friend mean in terms of that picture? Like, which one? The beautiful man in which, the underwear. In the underwear? Mm -hmm. Good friends. What's the wink good friends? What? Come on now, you can't leave me like this. Putting two to two together? Pretty well, obvious. I don't know. I, I think I'm putting two and two together, but... It's pretty obvious. Yeah, but... I don't know why that would be a secret. Very, very recently, I came out to my parents. I was like, well, you know, I'm gay again. The minute I told them, it was like I was alive. Really alive for the first time. Well, you give off an attracted to girls vibe. Well, I still am. But it's not as intense, so, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means. So, are you bi? I don't think so. Yeah, I met an awesome guy. His name is Paul. I, I don't know. I've never felt like this for somebody before. Are you still with Paul? Mm hmm. Is he coming? No. Nah. Well, I don't know. Why? Because. He's okay, I want you to beautiful. Look at that. See what he's wearing in the middle picture? What is that? Military. Exactly. <laughs> So not a secret. Mean, That's not a secret. Yeah, Secrets are like, um, I have one nut or something. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I have to be very careful with what I reveal about him. Like, I can ruin his career, his life, and his family doesn't know. Who's this? That's my friend Paul. Yeah? Yeah. I've never really lived with, with a, a gay guy before. Is that a politically correct word, gay? So what's up with Paul? Paul? I Pretty totally cute, understand. Huh? Yeah, he's really cute. He's got a good smile. That's good thing. Every time I walk into my room and I see his pictures, it's hard. The minute I met him, we were together for three days straight. I mean, it's crazy because we just met each other and we didn't talk like about the stuff. Like, how long ago? I met him, like, three weeks ago. Oh, like, oh, for real? Yeah, like, <laughs> just met him. But I'm serious. From the second I met him, it was, like, electric. <laughs> Oh God, Insane. That's the best thing in the yeah, whole world. Yeah, you know, it's like, I don't want to go. And even if it doesn't last for a long time, it's like... Even that moment. It, it doesn't matter, yeah. you know, because you're <laughs> living large for just that period or moment in time, and that's what counts. This kid's got a heart of gold. Right on. I mean, cool. he is just as whipped as I am. Hello. Hey. What's up, kid? How you doing? I knew it was going to be you. You know, I just got through talking about you. Did you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I might have a surprise for you. Yeah? What's the surprise? Tell me. I decided to come to New Orleans. You're gonna come down here? Yeah. You can't, you can't, I want you to come bad, but you can't come. You can be gay and in the military, but you cannot, you can't be out. It cannot be spoken that you are gay. Today, I want to see you so bad. But at the same time, I'm not gonna compromise you, your job, your life. If it does come out that you're gay, you're immediately discharged. His best friends are in the military, and they don't know. And his family doesn't know. I, can I just like, kiss you for an hour, and then you go about your way? He's putting his entire life on the line, and means so much to me. Look, we can watch Paul walk up to the door. Go in. <laughs> Paul's going to be here, like, so soon. I'm excited that I'm going to see Paul. But at the same time, I'm afraid for him coming into this situation. Is it him? Yeah, it's him. Look at him. <laughs> Back to you. It always comes around. Back to you. <laughs> what are you doing hiding over here? I tried to forget you. I tried to say. I can't believe I'm doing this. But it's too late. It's OK, baby. Don't worry about it. It's OK. Hi, Paul. Hello, how are you? It's so nice to finally meet you. I've heard a lot about you. Paul's really cute. I understand his fear, and I think that's part of the reason that I would want to be the one to try to talk to him or sort of make him feel slightly more comfortable. Don't be freaked out. It's all right. It's all right. Let me show you around. Right. Right, Danny, so good night. Good night, baby. <laughs> Seriously, Danny, if you turn to the flip side, I'm, I'm going to know not, not what to do. I'll be like laying here, and I'll be like, oh my gosh. Get me out of this room! <laughs> I'm just sitting back and taking everything in. It's so new that I decided early that I couldn't 
pass judgment right away. Why did they say coming out of the closet? Like, are you in a closet? No. They put things in a closet that you want to hide away. Why can't they stick another freaking gay guy in here? I'm glad they didn't. Because we'd never see you. <laughs> he really man. is in the closet with his friend. <laughs> Before I came here, I just did not think that there would ever be any connection between me and a, a, a gay person. But meeting Danny, I just totally realized that's ridiculous. I guess I'm not really cool with the way you like are choosing to live your life. I didn't choose it, you know? If I could be straight, I mean, it'd be so nice. My life would be so easy. Who in their right mind would choose this? Because it is not an easy life. Clue, he's gonna do that. He's such an awesome guy. Welcome back. What did you bring? Doc Shays. <laughs> you brought Doc Shays. Not only did he show up, but he brings some of food from my favorite restaurant back in Atlanta. Chopstick. You got it all. Yeah. <laughs> did you tell them what you were doing at the restaurant? Yeah. This is and the most know. incredible What's present I've ever like? got. I'm gonna let you buy yourself. Here's your dog shades. Thank you so much. I know you've been hungry for it. Not for not just for the dog shades, mm -hmm. but for you. My Valentine is obviously Paul. And I have to say, this is the first time ever in my life I've had a Valentine. How long are you staying? One day, I think. Awesome. This guy is everything that I have ever been looking for. I am tripping out. <laughs> I realized that if I'm gonna be strong down here, that I'm, I have to do it from this point. And uh, I just have to resist temptation. I definitely get the best Valentine's present. I'm still open-minded about a lot of things, but I'm still firmly Catholic, 100%. Matt is a super cool kid, but he makes me feel weird as hell after I hang out with him for a little while. I don't know what it is. He really thinks, like, something's wrong with being gay. Like, he thinks it's wrong. Oh, yeah, I didn't even think of that. With Matt, I should really deal with that because it's really, like, hindering our relationship, me getting to know him more. And your beliefs say that it's wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want you to talk to me about. Like, I mean, you, you honestly, like, believe it's wrong. Sexuality was given to us by God to unite people, you know? And from that, the fruit of that love is like children. And any time you take either of those out of it, you know, you take the love away, or you take away the opportunity for children to be made, then you're not fulfilling, I'm not fulfilling, what God created sexuality for. Work with God with that, because when it comes down to it, that's the decider, you know? I seriously feel like I do have a relationship with God, and mm -hmm. I'm like so certain about it. It's, there's no doubt in my mind. You know, I see your relationship, and I see this real. I don't cringe, you know, I don't think, oh, that Danny's going to hell. You sit there and say that I don't judge, but I really do believe you do. I'm not judging. I have my beliefs, but I'm not pointing fingers and condemning. I support you, you know, you're my friend. I mean, I'm, you know, you are. Just give like a high five. <laughs> I don't know, it's all good. All right, I feel much better now. Well, that's good to hear, dude. I feel better too. And right now, how do I feel about homosexuality? I'm still learning. Yesterday, I almost thought I wasn't gonna go. Why? I have no idea. You're starting to worry about all this, aren't you? I'm definitely worried about Paul and like the issues with his identity and the military. You know, like it has to stay hidden. You'll be here like Thursday evening. I will call you before I leave. I love you, kid. All right, bye. Bye. Say bye home. Yep, we're right here. All right. Hey. How are you doing? All right. Sir. This is Paul. That's my dad. Hey, Steve. Hey, don't you? And you remember mom. Did y'all find the grocery store already? Right? Yeah. Let me bring you the grill so you can wash it off. Any bro pads? Yes, two big bags. No. 
kill you for this. I did not realize it was gonna overlap like this. I know. Well, Come on, let's go outside. Yeah. Handle's about to fall off of us. We don't have any tools, so we had to do the best we could do. My dad knows what's up with me. The thing is, I'm not sure if he really understood the dynamic between me and Paul, though. Can I get the keys to the car? We're gonna get some ice. Paul's relationship with Danny is a homosexual act. Having homosexual feelings is not wrong, but when you give in to those temptations, then it is wrong. So how are you doing? I'm doing great. Your mom makes me instantly feel at home, so. Yeah, mom's awesome. This is so good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's affirmative. Oh, see, that's good sweet tea right see, there. See, we're not used to this. Like having a meal on a plate here, you know? <laughs> this doesn't happen. This was so good. Thank you. It's like for me to not be talking, this is good. It's good. Hey, guys. It's very nice meeting you. Good to meet you, too. Y'all have a good evening. Good night. <laughs> Thanks again, Mom and Dad. Things go well. Do you want to shove anything in their face or anything? You know what I mean? I think Danny's mother understood Paul's relationship with Danny, but I'm not sure if Danny's father understood the relationship. Anyhow, what well, Paul likes about the are. Was he disappointed that Dad didn't know who he was? Well, I didn't tell him that. He would have been disappointed. Like, he was all happy because Dad was so cool to him. Definitely in my past, there has been very little communication especially with my family. I figured like he's smart enough to put two and two together and figure out that he's not just some guy hanging out at the real world house. You now I've gotten to this point doing the things the way I have, but to move ahead, I have to like stop brushing these things aside, pull them all out and really like deal with them. You know, that one know, well, who is he? And I told him that he was one of your friends from Atlanta. I didn't say he was an intimate friend. It's called boyfriend, Ma. Well, I know that. <laughs> okay. You can say that. Maybe someday I'll get to the point when I, where I can say that and feel comfortable. Hi, I am Danny, and I am originally from Georgia, but I currently live in Vermont. At the time when I was cast to be on The Real World, I had absolutely no life plan. I was mostly in the closet, but I was seeking sort of the catalyst to be fully out of the closet and embrace being my true raw self, as scary as that was. He's one of my good friends from my land. What's the week? I was like, well, I'm gay. The minute I told them, it was like I was alive, really alive for the first time. I knew it was gonna create some ripples, but the impact that it really did have globally was mind-blowing. I still get messages daily from people around the globe who say it changed their life. Are you serious? How do you know? <laughs> Returning to the real world feels surreal. We have all lived full lives in these past 22 years. There's a bit of anxiety around that piece. So this could be such a different experience. I may be meeting an entirely different person this time. And in some cases, that's actually a positive thing. One of the most disputed uh. policies under the Clinton administration, don't ask, don't tell, prohibited any LGBTQ plus military personnel from serving openly. Not only did your season offer a main street perspective on the issue, but it also exposed the frightening reality for one very public relationship. I wonder what that could do. Dude, we need to do this on the day that I'm this hungover. <laughs> <laughs> very, very recently, I came out to my parents. The minute I told them, it was like I was alive. Really alive for the first time. Are you in your uniform right now? No, I'm actually not in anything. Damn, that's even better. <laughs> I met an awesome guy. His name is Paul. Is he coming? No. Well, I don't know. Why? It is. He's okay, I want you to look beautiful. At look at that. See what he's wearing in the middle picture. What is that? The military. Exactly. Oh. Yeah, just don't tell no. Right. Oh. And it's not worth it to jeopardize all that. I want him to, and he wants to, but I don't know how, you know, he can't walk around with a mask on. I've decided to come to 
You're gonna come down here? I want you to come back, but you can't come. You can be gay and in the military, but you cannot you can't be out. It cannot be spoken that you are gay. If it does come out that you're gay, you're immediately discharged. I'm not gonna compromise you, your job, your life. That's just, I mean, that's a huge thing in my mind right now. It's like, I wanna see him so bad, but at the same time, you know, I just, I realize that I can't sacrifice his welfare, his job, his whole life. Do you have anything else you wanna talk about? Okay, I have these pictures over the mantle, right? One of them, obviously, you can see Paul's face. You can see who Paul is, it's obvious. And I'm just really concerned about, I know the cameras have done close-ups on these pictures, and I'm just very concerned about his welfare. I mean, ethically speaking, his life could be ruined. This is a production That's like, that's a huge concern for me right don't, now. Don't be concerned about it. Okay, okay. We'll blur Paul's face to protect his identity. Okay, that's... Right now. No, I understand. Listen, listen. I don't need to cover my face or anything with that. No, it's taken care of. Okay, I and, trust you. No, and tomorrow, my like. Blood, we're talking like arrest. Oh, I know, I know. Wait, is it him? Yeah, it's him. Look at him. <laughs> He's still all <on> scared. <laughs> what are you. No, if that doesn't look fishy, I don't know what does. What are you doing hiding over here? He's literally hiding in the bushes. <laughs> no, it's okay, seriously. The, the directors are about to come out and talk to you. It's cool. It's cool. Come here, kid. I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> it's okay. Can't believe I'm doing this. It's okay, don't, don't worry about it. That was such a brave step to take because there was no way for him to know that MTV was going to blur him. Of course, they made that promise, but you can't know that when you're living in it. So, like, he was risking his entire career. This is Paul. I'm super freaked out right now. Let me show you around. Where's your room? It's upstairs. Come on. No, 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 no. Come on. Don't run up there and hide. Some cameras, <laughs> It's OK. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's a huge issue for him to come and be on the show and show his face and have the possibility of the whole country seeing this. Don't be freaked out. It's all right. It's all right. You're, uh... What? It's all right. It's all right. Oh my God. His best friends are in the military and they don't know. And his family doesn't know. He's putting his entire life on the line. <sighs> that was cool to see him. I think about Danny a lot and I think about what he took on in that experience. As I watched the clip, you could feel that he was afraid. He still makes me anxious. Weird. You can take a breath and share whatever you want to share. <sighs> yeah, you don't need a breath. You can take a breath and share whatever you want. Yeah, I need a breath. Oh, man. Well, I'm waiting for Paul to arrive. Oh, my God. That's crazy. Yeah. How long has been since you've seen him? I haven't seen him since then. Since y'all broke up? Yeah. I think the awkward part is for him because for us to have a genuine conversation about the end of our relationship, he has to be honest about bad behavior. Mm -hmm. So somebody beating on the door. Here we go. Someone is knocking on the door. That's going to be really interesting to see him and truly close that chapter in a meaningful, material way. Oh God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I gotta call you back. This is legit, I gotta call you back. Oh my God. You look completely different. Oh my Your God. Your hair is like brown. <laughs> I look like a Hi Paul, welcome to our house. <laughs> Long time no see. You look a little bit different from the last time I saw you. Uh, you look exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> the Paul I remember was someone who was clean cut, more of a conservative dresser. So opening the door and, and seeing a, a pimp was a bit jarring. I have no expectations coming into this. I have a sense that this could end up being pointless. And we talk in circles just as much as this could be some sort of closure. Paul is here. He's so cute. I'm gonna give them their privacy. Yeah, okay, me too. 
to be honest, like a lot of what I was going through was CPTSD. Like, it was really bad. I was not really ready to be out. Like, I was not ready to own that in myself, much less own it publicly, much less own your safety. We come from an era where if you were gay in the military, you would get killed. In Paul's case, I think since he is higher in rank that if um, it were known that he is gay, I think, I'm pretty sure he would go to prison. Being in the military and being with you was like wearing the rainbow flag on your forehead. We were literally trying to force two worlds together that made life dangerous for both of us. This was a show that everybody was watching. People would recognize us left and right. Anytime I was in public with Paul, my state of fear was like at an 11 on a 10 scale. I always thought that you were one of the bravest people just because you put yourself out there in that day and time. Now, a gay man on television is like nothing. But back then, it was, was mind-blowing. I really did put you on this pedestal because I really was in, in love with you. I got caught in a really crazy mindset of codependency uh -huh. and a sense of responsibility to stay in that relationship and not let people down. Yeah, I think we had to kind of keep up a relationship. And then it rotted from the inside out. I, I agree. If I hadn't have done the show, Paul and I probably would have gone our separate ways earlier. But that relationship in some odd way came to represent to a lot of people an ideal. It felt like it belonged to the world more than just us. I'm gonna forever be asked about Paul. <laughs> That's never gonna end. He's forever gonna be a part of my story. It is a nice closure that is really unexpected, a huge catharsis just to revisit a relationship that was really important for seven or eight years of our lives that deserved some sort of closure. I wish Paul nothing but positive will, but it is nice that I can now know, at least in my mind, that we've closed that chapter entirely. All right, you ready, man? Let's do this. Oh, it's nice out today. Do you miss living in Seattle? Um, I, I did for a long time. All, you know, a lot of my friends were there. I kind of feel like, like growing up in Georgia, I was not allowed to be. I didn't feel safe to be my full self. So I didn't feel like that was allowed and I was capable of that until I moved out there. Though nothing replaces childhood yeah. experiences, no matter what they were. Good or bad. Good or bad. Yeah. With Matt, it's, it's complicated. I think because Matt and I grew up in the same area in Georgia. So we have that bond and we always have and always will. Like we can speak each other's language. Is it true you uh, you helped actually rebuild a church in Atlanta? Is that right? Or maintain a church? I did. That was Virginia Highlands Baptist Church. Oh yeah, I um, remember it. Which at the time was vocally progressive in inviting all people, including LGBT people, to come and not with a mission to convert. So the actual facility was falling apart. Okay. So I took every bit of anything that had any meaningful tie to the show, including that terrible gray sweater that I wore all the time, and I sold it in an online auction on my website. And I raised a ton of money, like way more than I ever thought I was going to raise. And then I helped put a new roof on this huge building. So you're like a patron saint of that place. That's Catholic language for a Baptist church for LGBT. <laughs> um, but it makes me feel good that I helped an organization. I am not what I would describe or you would describe as a religious person. I do like to believe that I am a spiritual person. I believe that the core foundations of all the world's religion really revolve around the simple, pure message of, of love and loving each other and figuring out how to love each other. And I think the more we stray away from that message in any of our religions, the more we stray away from the like, ultimate core truth in life. Yeah, I, uh, I don't disagree at all. Um, for me, I'm very religious. I wrestle with it and I stay there. Believe me, you've got six or eight beefs with my religion. I've got 10 or 12. Like my list is longer than you think. 
And I think living with you and getting to know you then and then through the years, like that's, that's no small thing. And always in my heart, I wonder like, do we need to talk about this again? I validate how you feel because my words did hurt you. And I, dude, I take ownership over that. I appreciate your heartfelt sincerity in it. Um, and I'm not rejecting the apology. I'm wise enough in life now to understand that people do wrestle with frameworks, exactly what you're saying. I know the framework you're struggling with, which is a much bigger picture than yeah. us, and I think why it's so important for us to talk about this, but I, I genuinely do see that you've been on a journey with it. At that stage in my life, I had been through so many layers of rejection from family and, and community, and especially the religious rejection yeah. coming from where we come from. You know, this is the, this is the struggle I have with my parents to this day. Um, it comes with a conditional love that they don't recognize as being conditional love because it's this idea that I'm gonna love all of you except for the part that I don't accept of you, that I reject, and I'm not actually gonna speak of it or talk about it openly because it makes me so uncomfortable, but I'm just going to have sort of a don't ask, don't tell policy with it, but it always means that I don't fully embrace you. That's like, That's that hard. is my scenario though. It's really, really, really hard. Yeah. This life is short, and it gets shorter every day. I want to invest, and I do invest in people at this stage in life who 100% unconditionally love and accept everything I am, how I am at this point in life. It's my job to hold my line in peace and go about my business. And that means not avoiding people like this. It means putting myself out there and living my, my true self. The simple one I always come back to is that like, you have to love your neighbor, not just love them, not just love people who are like you, but to truly love everyone. And uh, to not just love people who have similar beliefs or love people who have the same hobbies. Uh, but that's the challenge because if we all stay in our little ideologies and we never come in the middle, it doesn't go anywhere, you know? At the end of the day, like one thing I love about you, Matt, is that you genuinely want good for people and you think about the best in people even when a lot of us are like, these people. <laughs> yeah. um, and I appreciate that. It's a healthy mindset to come from. You're just on the inside, I'm seeing it from the outside. What's unique about this conversation is that we're both taking time to speak and taking time to listen and we're getting to know one another in new ways and it feels fantastic. That's why I came and that's what I got. And it's a thrill that it's happening now. Give me a hug, bud.